Tonight's breaking news, opening monologue. Hard to believe, but 17 years ago today, we were attacked like never before, right here on American soil, all told, 2,977 innocent men and women and children lost their lives at the hands of pure evil in our lifetime, fulfilling what they think is their evil ideology designed by an evil man by the name of Osama bin Laden. Now, some of the finest people on earth were senselessly killed. Good, hardworking people in the World Trade Center, first responders, police, over 300 firemen. While everybody was rushing down, they rushed into those burning towers. Many others in the Pentagon, the passengers, the crew of the planes that were brutally hijacked and used as weapons of war, including the brave men and women on Flight 93. They fought back against their attackers. Let's roll causing that plane to crash into a remote field in Pennsylvania, miles away from what we believe was their intended target in Washington, D.C. Today, President Trump visited a brand new monument honoring those brave American souls, and he delivered these powerful remarks. Let's take a look. All of America wraps up and joins together. We close our arms to help you shoulder your pain and to carry your great, great sorrow. Your tears are not shed alone, for they are shared grief with an entire nation. We grieve together for every mother and father, sister and brother, son and daughter, who was stolen from us at the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and here in this Pennsylvania field. We honor their sacrifice by pledging to never flinch in the face of evil and to do whatever it takes to keep America safe. Now, tonight, as we honor all of those who lost their lives 17 years ago today, we must never forget the danger of radical Islamic terrorism is real. It is always lurking. They are. They were at war with us. We were not at war with them. We better be prepared, and we better accept that sad but true reality. Meanwhile, one particularly unhinged, well, MSNBC conspiracy TV morning host seems to have really forgotten just how devastating 9-11-2001 was. Yeah, good old liberal Joe put out a new op-ed. He put it in the Washington Post. It's entitled, Trump is harming the dream of America more than any foreign adversary ever could. Yesterday, the day before 9-11, literally, he's promoting this absurd article, and he sends out a tweet. It reads, quote, my latest, Trump is damaging the dream of America more than any terrorist attack ever could. And according to the tweet and that op-ed, Joe Scarborough thinks Trump is worse than 9-11, where we lost nearly 3,000 people. Yeah, the economy's turned around, Joe. People have jobs. Four million fewer people on food stamps. Four million new jobs are created. Really? That's how low you're going to sink? You know, sometimes I, I literally hang. There's no net underneath me right now. This is a live show. I do three hours of live radio every day. Sometimes you can say things and they come out wrong. As Congress would say, revise, extend our remarks. Some things can be an unintentional, slip of the tongue. This was a thought-out, written piece. He spent time thinking of this. And today on his dumpster fire of a morning show, he doubled down on stupid. Watch this. If you strip America of its ideas, uh, forget about knocking down buildings in the financial district, forget about running planes into the Pentagon. Those are tragedies, but those tragedies bring us closer together. America is an idea. You gut America of that idea. Mm -hmm. That's when you do the most harm. The retweeting of neo-Nazi videos, Charlottesville. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. What he said about uh, majority black countries. Um, that is tearing more at the fabric of America than attacks on the Twin Towers did. We rebuilt from that. We became stronger because of that. Uh, but this is, seems to me a far graver, graver threat to the idea of America. Hey, Joe, kids grew up without their fathers and mothers. 
And after facing much uh, backlash for his absurd comparison, liberal Joe, he partially tried to backtrack his well thought out quote column and said that he should have shown more care in wording his tweet. And then his blushing bride to be, fellow host Mika Brzezinski, vigorously defends him on Twitter. Of course, America's, you know, cutest couple, Joe and Mika, perfect example of what happens when Trump derangement syndrome gets way out of control. At this point, I don't even think these two can ever recover. It's that sick. We'll deal more with this later, but we now have some very important breaking news tonight. Literally minutes ago, Sarah Carter handed us brand new, never before seen, unearthed text once again between FBI lovebirds Struck and Page. Uh, why don't they just hand them all over? It's September 2016, months before the election. It appears Struck and Page were working or contributing to an op-ed about Russian election interference. Look at your screen right there, September 2nd. Lisa Page asked Struck, quote, but we are still writing the op-ed, yes? Struck then responds, yes-ish. And on September 5th, 2016, the Washington Post, they published a story about Russian interference. On the very same day, Sarah Carter reporting tonight, the former FBI lovebirds share a link to an article. And Strzok writes, just read the article. We say a lot of the same things. I guess that's okay. And then Page writes back, quote, yeah, but that's why ours is going to need to be more folksy. So it's not like a news article. Maybe the talk, maybe like more smelly Walmart people-ish. Struck had said that. Add these new texts to what was released yesterday from Congressman Mark Meadows in North Carolina. You have a pretty clear picture of what's going on, including this text from Struck to Page. It took place on April 10, 2017, reading, quote, I had literally just gone to find this phone to tell you what I want to talk to you about. Media leak strategy with the DOJ before you go. Oh, FBI and DOJ colluding. And then two days later, on April the 12th, Strzok warned Lisa Page that two damning articles were coming out about her namesake, Carter Page. And then on April 22nd, we originally believed this was on April the 12th. Meadows' office corrected that earlier today. Uh, same point, though. Peter Strzok tells Lisa Page, quote, articles out. Well done, Page. This is what we've now been telling you. What is a coordinated effort, the highest levels of the FBI and the DOJ leaking anti-Trump information before the election, after the election, to the press, first to stop him from becoming president, then to destroy his presidency. But sneaky Peter Strzok, he's now trying to actually put out his own conniving spin on this fresh new scandal. His attorney says the term media leak strategy in Mr. Strzok's text refers to a department-wide initiative to detect and stop leaks to the media. Media. The president and his enablers are once again peddling unfounded conspiracy theories to mislead the American people. Oh, but our words sound exactly alike. We're going to have to make it more folksy. Um, don't insult our intelligence. This is the same Peter Strzok who claimed under oath that political bias didn't impact his work as an FBI agent, but Hillary should win $100 million to nothing. Now, the same super patriot who played a critical role in exonerating Hillary Clinton. We know she committed felonies and fomenting this witch hunt from the get-go against Donald Trump while trashing Trump on his work phone, openly wishing Hillary would win the election. How could anyone vote for Trump? I just was in a Walmart. Smelly Walmart people were there. I could smell the Trump supporters. And earlier today, the president responded on Twitter, quote, so terrible, nothing being done at the DOJ J or FBI, but the world is watching, and they get it completely. We did reach out to Struck Page and the DOJ. We've yet to get a response. We'll have more on these breaking news developments. Sarah and Greg will join us in a few minutes, but we shift our focus. So what is the most important midterm election of your life? Now, I'm going to say this for the next 56 days. Last night, I called on you to wake up, pay attention. Republicans, to be very blunt, because I only tell you the truth, they're in real danger of losing the House of Representatives. And the Senate, I'm not that comfortable about that either. Look at your screen. If that is your district, you will likely decide the fate of this country in 56 days. If Democrats win these races, the Trump agenda will be stopped. It'll halt right in its tracks. All the progress we've been telling you about, the Democrats, their insane quest for impeachment will begin in earnest. Just listen to Chuck and Maxine Waters. The Senate, 
frankly, also up for grabs. Republicans lose the Senate. You can forget about constitutionalist judges getting confirmed. It won't happen. And meanwhile, right here on this program, we have long warned that it's only a matter of time before the aggressive, threatening rhetoric and tactics coming from the left is going to result somebody's going to get hurt or killed. Here's kind of what I'm talking about. Take a look. I will go and take Trump out tonight. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Well, of course I want to punch him in the face. Right. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, and you push back on them, and you tell them they're not welcome. Please, get up in the face of some Congress people. I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. Get in their face, Chase, Sarah Sanders, Pam Bondi, uh, Secretary Nielsen out of restaurants. Just say anything horrible about the first lady, the first daughter, even a 12-year-old kid. Over the weekend, well, someone did, in fact, get in the face of a Republican congressional candidate. Guy's name is Rudy Peters. Never heard of him before, but he's running as a Republican in California's 25th district. Guess what? He was approached at a campaign booth by a man who is making disparaging remarks about the Republican Party. Well, that deranged individual then pulls out a switchblade and attempted to stab Peters, but the knife thankfully malfunctioned. And then they had a confrontation. I've said it a million times before. I'll say it again. The tactics of the anti-Trump resistance have gone way too far. And while Peters was able to escape unharmed, and I always blame people for what they do, you can't blame people's rhetoric for what people's actions are, but you've got to admit this is not helping. The next victim might not be so lucky, but if it was a concern Conservative, oh, they go nuts blaming, oh, talk radio and the Fox News channel. I'm not holding individuals responsible, but the rhetoric is reckless, it is dangerous, and it's out of control. And more on the upcoming election throughout the show. But first, joining us now with reaction to our big breaking news, he's the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax. It is the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton, frame Donald Trump, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, and Fox News investigative reporter and contributor Sarah Carter. Sarah, let's go to the news. This just broke within the last hour or so. You now got new text messages on top of the old text messages. We got a response from the attorney, from Peter Strzok. It is ridiculous considering we can read and we have fundamental, simple, basic understanding of what they were texting back and forth. Let's talk about the new text messages. Well, I think these new text messages, Sean, really expose what was going on inside the FBI and DOJ. Once again, we're seeing more evidence of basically collusion within the FBI and DOJ to change and shift the narrative during the 2016 investigation uh, into President Trump uh, and then candidate Trump. and. Uh, collusion with Russia. I mean, there has never been any proof of this. We know now, based on these text messages, not only did they use a dossier that was unverified, a dossier that was salacious, one that even Christopher Steele, who he wrote himself, that it was not verified. And now we're seeing in these text messages that they were shifting the narrative. What's most important here, Sean, is that Congress get to the bottom of this. That is why they are asking Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to investigate this. We need to re-question all of these players. Struck, Page, Sally Yates, the boss of Bruce Orr, everyone. Everybody needs to be re-questioned on this and they need to find the answers to these questions because honestly, it's not looking good for them. Greg. The statement today by Struck and his attorney is ludicrous, it's laughable, and it's actually shameful and dishonest. You know, you they are kid, saying- You ever have your kids in life and they're little and they try to lie to you? Right. And you're like, don't <laughs> insult my intelligence, right. stop. They must think Americans are stupid. So they issue the statement saying, oh, Peter Strzok was trying to detect and stop leaks. Look at the plain language of the text. Here's one of them. Article is out, exclamation point, well done, page. That is not stopping a leak, that's creating a story we, we gotta with sound more a folksy. leak. 
We got to sound more yeah. folksy. Yeah. I mean, so the, all of this just <laughs> underscores that there was one purpose in mind, and that was to damage Donald Trump and undo the election. And they were all leaking. It wasn't just struck and page. Andrew McCabe now under investigation for leaking to the media and lying about mm -hmm. it four times. The biggest leaker of all, of course, is James Comey, who stole government documents, gave them to an unauthorized person for the sole purpose of leaking them to trigger the special counsel. So we have Strzok, oh. Page, we have McCabe, we have Comey, Sarah, we have Yates, or we have Steele, but we also have Rod Rosenstein. We have and Rod Rosenstein. Ways, because yeah. he appointed Mueller. I, I, I really want to get into this. He kind of holds the keys to the kingdom in a way, doesn't he? Because doesn't he get to decide, A, if let's say Mueller writes a report, he will make the decision, if I'm not mistaken, if the report is released to the American people. Number two, doesn't he get to decide, Rob Mueller has to go to him and say, I want to subpoena Donald Trump, and I want to get him under oath, and I want to have a year-long court fight to make him uh, testify before a grand jury? So if Rod Rosenstein is conflicted in this whole thing, which we now know he is because he signed the fourth FISA warrant, the third renewal, um, how, does, he's, how does that work? And he's sorry, a witness he's, in the Comey firing because he wrote exactly. the recommendation. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. He's, you know, as far as obstruction is concerned, and if Mueller is going down that road, I mean, Rod Rosenstein himself was the one that wrote the letter to recommend the firing of Comey. He wrote the letter to President Trump. So he's either a witness or a co-conspirator. He can't be in charge of this investigation. And another point, in fact, Sean, he signed that fourth FISA. And this is why it is imperative that President Trump declassify those documents, declassify the FISA documents that need to be declassified classified the uh, gang of eight dossier that they showed to particular members of Congress that's very important because that also contains exculpatory information and the Bruce or interviews with the FBI once all that information is out the American people are going to know the truth and that's why it is so important to hold these people in the DOJ accountable and get but those I don't documents think the president declassified. should do it all in one dump I think if they're all so important you should do one one day let the American people absorb the magnitude of it, then another mm -hmm. one, then another one. But here's the thing. What is the culpability here of Rod Rosenstein, Greg Jarrett? Oh, it could be tremendous. It but depends wait, but, but on what's in the he, Rosenstein renewal. Would he, he be the one that decides whether or not they pursue a subpoena against Trump? Does he make that decision or does Mueller make it? Well, it would be Him. Mueller initially, but with permission and consent of Rod Rosenstein. And if Rod says no, it doesn't happen. Rod Rosenstein is so conflicted, he shouldn't just be not in the Department well, of Justice. Wouldn't he, he should get be nowhere mad, though, if Donald American Trump government. Released? Wait a minute, but here's the conflict. Wouldn't he get mad if Donald Trump releases the FISA warrant would. that he signed? And does that does he then seek revenge by saying, we're going to go after and subpoena the president? He might well do that. Look, he has every interest to continue to obstruct so he holds the release the keys of the the kingdom, doesn't he? He absolutely does. This so, is a man. So if you release anything about me that makes me look bad, I'm going to unleash Mueller even further on you. He absolutely could. This is the is abuse. That justice in America? This is he the could. abuse of power, and there's there's no justice at the Department of Justice currently under Rod Rosenstein and, and Jeff Sessions. Last word, sir. You know he could, Sean. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the American people deserve to know the truth. We deserve to understand what happened here, and we deserve to move on. So we need those declassified. All right. Unbelievable information. That close. The cards are going to come tumbling down. Thank you both. You guys have been amazing throughout the process.